I think for me, um, a shift in my own life took place uh, when I participated in the spiritual formation program with the church. And that was a three-year program, and it was transformational for me uh, to realize um, how, how much I needed to depend on spirit in my life instead of just kind of getting the job done is to take time to find out where um, the spirit was leading me. So, I don't know, do you have any? Yeah, I think that the Spiritual Formation Project really opened my eyes to more of what I think I knew I was looking for. Um, I think <laughs> I've always been a questioner and so asking questions of God, something I do regularly, but I don't know that I ever labeled it as discernment. I think I just wanted to know. I can remember a real important event around discernment happened for me as a young adult when I was questioning God about some experience. And I suddenly realized it was like, well, should we go here or should we move here? And it was God, God didn't really care. It was going to be, he was going to use us wherever we went. Um, and I think then the Spiritual Formation Project helped me realize that, yes, that was uh, what discernment was about, was being open to not the answer I was looking for, but to answers that were out there. I, I just read this morning, my theologi theologian that I always uh, quote, Henry Nouwen, said that solitude isn't a solution, it's a direction. I know that for me that direction was pointed to by Elijah in terms of looking for that still small voice. Um, and that's what I'm always seeking. I still feel like I'm a learner on that path. And I didn't uh, attend that course, but um, I did notice a change in, in Faye in that she uh, was a lot more, spent a lot more time in meditation we kind of slowed down a little bit. I think that was helpful because at the time we were um, going through some issues with the building of the labyrinth here at Southridge. And um, we slowed down and we spent a lot more time thinking about uh, the spiritual side of, of building the labyrinth. Well, again, um, you know, my journey through the spiritual formation program was such a personal one. And, uh, and then at the end of our three-year program, we were given this assignment to, to do a project. And all of a sudden it became, became like, hmm, maybe this isn't all about me, but maybe I need to figure out ways to to share um, spirituality with others. And so it was not not a difficult um, journey for me to make to, to decide that we wanted to build a labyrinth. The labyrinth had been such an important spiritual practice for me. I mean, I had been walking labyrinths for 20 years then at churches and at hospital uh, patios, um, at camps. Uh, I'd been walking labyrinths and then that had been meaningful to me for so many years up until that point. So sh wanting to share that with the congregation, with the mission center, with the community was kind of an easy um, direction for me to go in that moment. Yeah, and what was easy for me is they brought up the suggestion, <clears throat> and I like to go along with a lot of Faye's suggestions, but it it was a discerning moment in that, it, you know, I knew that that was the right project for us. Um, I, my um, love affair with labyrinths began in Chartres and 20 years ago, standing in the middle of this ancient cathedral with this ancient labyrinth and knowing I wanted to walk on it even though it was covered by folding chairs and tourists 
Um, and it wasn't too long after that that Faye and Mary and I began to walk together um, quite frequently, labyrinths in different places. And because for me, a labyrinth is a way I can be still without having to be still, you know, um, so I can, but it helps me focus um, my stillness, my solitude. It gives me a way to look at it. And I think when Faye brought up that project, it seems so right because yes, um, I've sh we've brought labyrinths in to share many times, but an outside labyrinth and having one that was permanent and fit our congregation was exciting. I would have probably had a much more cere cerebral um, project where I would have not expected anything to come of it. But this was exciting that we kind of thought, well, even if we don't do it, but we did. Thanks to Dan and Les Sundrum. <laughs> And my role in the labyrinth really was, I looked at it as a, kind of as a project, as a task. Um, how do we go about building a labyrinth uh, here on the property? But in walking labyrinths and looking at other labyrinths in the local area, and trying to envision a labyrinth here at Southbridge, it quickly turned from a, from a project to more of a, um, well, kind of a spiritual, spiritual happening. We spent a lot of time just trying to figure out where it was best to locate it, um, what fit the terrain here at Southridge, um, even to the point of trying to design a path that went down to the labyrinth. And uh, a lot of decisions had to be made, but they were, they were done, I think we spent oh, about two years once the idea was and once we had it approved by the, by the uh, congregation, it took about two years for us to dig the first, um, to start the labyrinth, because there was so much that we had to contemplate um, in designing and, and building it. And I think we knew um, it wasn't, we didn't have to discern really because we didn't have a good indoor space for um, a labyrinth. So it, it was kind of like the path was already set for us that it needed to be an outdoor labyrinth. But that was really what felt the direction we needed to go. We needed to make a labyrinth available for people to walk at any time, um, any time of the day, any day of the week. Um, no, nobody needs to check in with any of us about spending time on the labyrinth and that that was um, that was probably an easy discernment for us to make um, about where the labyrinth needed to be located so the next section is the sermon within community of christ that you're responding to and this is so there's several questions that i asked uh, as kind of a to help frame it, but what was the experience like for sharing your sense of vision for the labyrinth with Southridge? Describe what the journey was like for Southridge. Was it easy for them to sense that invitation to build one? And what role did discernment play in their journey? Uh, it's just kind of the, so some questions to help frame this section. Again, remember you're speaking to the people in the back of the room in terms of- uh, Check a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. I think I was gonna kind of kick that one on. Sure. So, so you're gonna pause. And then, when you're ready, again. The experience of sharing with Southridge was a learning experience. Um, we learned a lot from that. Because Faye and I were so excited about it, and we felt it so right, we just expected everyone to say, sure, let's do it. And what we didn't do, and we've learned, um, it's like a lot of business meetings, decisions are made way too quick and we don't give time for everybody to have a voice in that process of discernment, and we didn't do that. So it wasn't an easy path. It was kind of painful um, because some people hadn't had the chance to feel like this was a project they were uh, connected to. And so we brought it up in a budget meeting and it was we were at the end and we didn't have enough time. And that was just part of us learning that discernment isn't just about two people discerning and then telling everybody else what they should want to do. Um, 
fortunately, the majority of the people did support the project. And we had to kind of go, oh, okay. And, and they did do it, but we, we were aware of some of the reluctance. But to be honest, once the decision was made, we just moved forward. It had been made and people have been supportive and I think have embraced it as a congregation and people who haven't had experiences with it have been willing to um, to experience and support and, and also see some of the um, fruits of that labor. So it was, while it was a learning experience, that's, that's an important part of the discernment is learning and growing and being more open to what a congregation as a whole and how we make decisions as a congregation. Well, and that, I think that process was, um, helped me better understand too, that even though discernment feels, uh, like we wanted it to be a communal discernment process and it really couldn't be, it had to be very personal for each person and, and each person's discernment journey is different. And um, I think that was kind of an aha moment for us. Like, hmm, um, not everybody is on the same uh, journey that we are. Um, so everybody discerns, and, and you can't have a timeline really with it. You really need to uh, let things be a bit. And we did, we did let things be. Yeah, we let things be for, I think we waited about two years. Um, once the project was approved before we actually started it. And in, the, in those two years, uh, we spent more time with people who were not 100% on board with the project, got them involved. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of the ones, the biggest naysayers ended up helping to make decisions on where it was located, the color scheme, um, you know, got, got, got the whole congregation to be more involved. We didn't get everyone on board, but I think if we took a poll today, um, I think everyone would be on board because it has proven to be a, a, a nice thing that we did for the community. It is um, oftentimes will come out and there will be members from the community walking the labyrinth. So that always makes you feel good. And I think it, if you look at discernment overall, it taught us that discernment is isn't coming up with the right answer. You know, you come up with the best answer that you feel and then you all work together as if it's a communal decision to make it work or at some point to say, huh, we should have asked a different question maybe. So that was an important lesson also. Well, for me, um, this was always more about the community, really, than it even was about me personally or Southridge. It felt like, you know, we have, for years, we've talked about ways, how do we reach out to others in our community? And we've been hearing, you know, people aren't really, people don't really want to come to church anymore, but people have a, a yearning for, um, spiritual opportunities and this felt like such a, a non-denominational way to be to invite others to come to this space and to to engage in a spiritual practice but there were no strings attached to it you know um, there was no and then we'd like to see you on Sunday morning um, so it always felt to us like we we were creating this opportunity for people to engage in their own spiritual practice and that was very very important to us um, it, it's also interesting that we had our dedication service for the labyrinth the end of September 2019 and then you know within six months we were in a pandemic and we we, we at Southridge um, our community people all around were looking for ways to be able to engage in some kind of spiritual practice in 
on their own, not in community necessarily. And so it was, the timing was awesome for, for that, to be able to offer that. And Dan's right, we have seen so many people coming and using the, the labyrinth. We also, it also encouraged us to reach out um, to uh, others not in the community of Christ. Uh, we've, we are now part of the um, local labyrinth society. We are going to be participating in the World Labyrinth Walk on May 7th, you, you know, with our labyrinth. Um, we've connected with others in the community, like in an interfaith way, um, having others use our, our labyrinth. Um, we also were approached because of that connection through the, the, inner, the Labyrinth Society. Um, we had a local reporter contact us and invite us to be interviewed by him. And it was in the local paper about, and I feel like that uh, broadened the invitation too for others in the community to come and use our Labyrinth. It was exciting for me because it was something besides being known for pies. I mean, there's yeah. nothing wrong with pies. I'm a big pie fan. But this was something to do with the spirit that people, you know, I've, I have friends now who, when they ask where I go to church, or, you know, oh, I've been wanting to walk that labyrinth. And that, to me, is ex that probably is the most exciting part, that that's, people are aware of it and wanting to participate in it without, yes, without feeling that we're proselytizing um, and we're just, it's community service. I mean, we live in a community that's very rural. It's not, our, our closest neighbors are, we only have two, you know, that are people. And so it's not like we're connected um, easily with neighbors, but but the, it's a drive that people see the sign, you know, you're welcome to walk our labyrinth anytime to me is one of the most positive things we could ever say.